Welcome to Tyro TV, I'm Ron Tiarina, and for those of you who don't know what we're doing, man, we are having a good time. I'll tell you, today I got on the show, um, Ryan Frederick, he's a, a loan officer at a local bank that we actually bank with called Sherwood Bank in Defiance, Ohio. And I am thrilled and honored to have you here, Ryan, with Thanks. us. Um, the audience that we're talking to, uh, the people are incarcerated, but but what we find is the men like myself, when I used to be in prison, we're dreamers, man. We we like to dream and we're, we got ambitions and we got goals, right? Or And a lot of that we're learning how to make plans to obtain the goals that the dreams that we might be thinking about. And so we asked Brian to come on the show today to do something a little bit different, to really talk more pinpointing about, you know, how do we make these dreams and goals come to pass when we have no money, you know? But but we wanted, we need some dollars to be able to purchase the things we need in life, right? Like a washer and dryer, a car, a home, you know, right. and things of that nature. So, so Ryan, so we're just gonna jump right into this show and we're gonna get right into it because we don't have much time and I wanna really take advantage of your wisdom and what you bring and how you can help not only uh, me, but the, the people who are watching this show to help us get on our feet, right? Sure. Okay, so type of loans, what were we talking about? I think we were gonna talk a little bit about, you know, small business loans, you know, owning your own business someday. Um, mm -hmm. that's, that's a dream a lot of folks have. Um, not everybody can do it. I'm gonna take some steps to get there. Um, some of the others that are, are more common, the, you know, buying an automobile. Mm -hmm. um, is it better to lease? Is it better to, to buy? You know, yeah. what's the best way to go about that? Um, mortgage loan, you know, the dream is for everybody, okay. you wanna own your own home someday. So, so like we that. mentioned three types of loans, small business, automobile, mm -hmm. and mortgage. So let's take the first one, Sure. the uh, small business. So, okay, say I, 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 I wanna have my own business. What do you need to see from me when I come into your office and I sit there, what is it that I have to have in my portfolio, right? That will even get you to, hmm, I'm interested in what you're presenting. Um, you know, one of the things that you're gonna wanna do, anybody, um, and I know the, the, the audience we're talking to, you know, someday when, when uh, they get this opportunity to, to do this, um, there's a lot of uh, organizations out there that will help you with a business plan. Okay, so number one, um, we need a business number plan. Number one's a business plan, because that's gonna give us a, a layout, how much have you really thought this through? Mm. Um, and hopefully what you're looking to do, you're somewhat experienced in, um, that you know how to do that. Um, we, we've had some where they wanted to start their own restaurant. The only experience they had, they cooked in one mm, at one okay. time. Okay, well, okay, we might take a little more experience than that because um, now you actually got to run the place. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, different things, but the business plan is the centerpiece because it tells us all the thought that you put into this process, mm. how you're going to market it, um, what kind of um, projections you're seeing over the course of three to five years. You know, I love how you describe the business plan being the centerpiece. Mm -hmm. And when you think about a centerpiece on a table, it's gonna attract everybody. The job of yes. a centerpiece is for everybody's eyes to be on that, right? And it's gotta be something pretty, something easy on the eyes, right? So the business plan is what I'm hearing you when I hear centerpiece is, you know what, it's gotta be easy to read. Right. It's got to be understandable that, you know what, it's not going to take me a lot of time to figure out and really understand. Right. So we come back, Ryan. What I want to what I want to talk about is, OK, so the guy came and presented you the business plan. Mm -hmm. Then what, what's next? And okay. I think it's really important because a lot of the guys that are incarcerated, you know what? We may not be able to get a job. Getting a job when you have a felony is going to be one of the hardest things we do. So we come back. Join us. We're going to talk about how to get a business plan and what it's going to take, guys, because this is really important. And, and we are so excited to have Ryan. So stay tuned and we'll be right back. Tyro Dads will help you to see who you really are on the inside by coming to terms with your past, present, and future. You will begin to move forward by using your time on the inside to transform yourself. We know you're not the only one serving time. Your family is too. Overcoming the issues that existed prior to and during incarceration are often more than what many families can survive. Tyro Dads has a unique method of reaching and healing families based on Ron and Catherine Tiarina's own personal experiences. Tyro Dads Dads works exclusively with incarcerated fathers who have minor children. The program lasts for 10 weeks and focuses on intensive character development. You will be taught to take responsibility for your actions. 
to own it. You'll be prepared to overcome the obstacles of incarceration and transition back into your home and community, both successfully and permanently. Upon successful completion of this program, you will earn the title of Tyro, which means a warrior, someone learning something new. You will be one of the honored, a man worth following. If you think you have what it takes to be a Tyro, or you want to know more, contact your local project facilitator or your institution staff. Welcome back to Tyro TV, I'm Ron Tierina, and today on our show, we're talking about loans and what they mean and how to get them and what they're called. And today we have a dear friend of ours, a special guest called Ryan, not called, but his name is Ryan Fredericks, and it's good to have you. So, so Ryan, Thanks. we were talking about in the last segment yeah. about a small business loan, and I think that's important because a lot of the men, while I was incarcerated, we have a lot of dreams, a lot of ambitions, and, we, and because it might be difficult for us to get a job, right, we're thinking about, you know what, I gotta create my own job. So I need to start my own business. So we talked about the centerpiece being pretty, right? So what, what else can go with that? Well, we talked about the centerpiece being uh, pretty, being complete. Um, I think when, when we're going to break, you mentioned, you know, it, you don't want to make it too long mm. either. I, I don't want it to take me the entire morning to sit and read your business plan, all right? It should be pretty concise, uh, but give me all the information that I need. Um, the other things you're going to have around that um, is saving up funds because you're gonna need some money down or you're gonna need, well in this case here, you might not have the collateral. So I, I gotta come out. in so, with money. I mean, you Is need to put usually? some money, some skin in the game. Oh, okay. Because it's kind of one of those, if you have skin in the game on anything, are you gonna let that go bad? Mm. Probably not. Probably not, that's right. If my skin's in there. If, it's, if I have no risk in the game and I'm not liking it, I can walk away at any time mm. and not think a thing about it because I didn't lose anything. Oh, that's so that's right. where, having you know, collateral in the game or some, some money yeah. into the game, it's gonna make any lender, financial institution, things like that feel a little bit better about what you're so doing. So is there like a typical percentage that somebody should plan on bringing into the game? Everything's a little bit different. Okay. Um, whether, you know, if it's, uh, say you're opening up in a, a garage where you're gonna do mechanical okay. work, the equipment, um, things like that, you might need more down on something like that, or real estate, you're gonna need a different amount down. Okay. So everything's a little bit different depending on what you're looking to do. And there's there's a bunch of different types of businesses you can go into and kind of what you'd need. That's wonderful. You know what, I love hearing about this. It's, it, the saying is, and we all said this in prison, if you, if you plan, if you fail to plan, then you plan to fail, right? right? And you gotta have a business plan. You gotta take your vision and write it down on paper. And it's even good to share it, right? Would you recommend sharing with somebody, get their perspective on it to see if somebody can help you tweak it so where you can present it, right? So let me go, let's go back to the present. Let me take you to the presentation. Okay. I come into there, I got my plan ready to go, but I haven't even walked it through myself. And I come and I'm, and I'm trying to share it with you, but I'm mumbling all around and I'm jumping and I don't, I'm, not even, I'm not able to sell it to you. How, did, how does you feel as a lender when that happens? Uh, it's not real good. Um, when you leave, that's one of those ones going, we're not doing that. <laughs> yeah, okay. You know, but if somebody comes in and you're right, if they have, if they're able to show the excitement yeah. and really sell it for what they're doing, and they, and, and I buy into that. And, and I'm like, okay, I can see where you're going with this. Yeah. You've thought this through. The questions I've asked you, you're able to answer. Um, all those different things. It's a whole different perspective. So getting a there. car loan, is that the same type of situation, getting a car loan versus getting a small business loan? No, it, it's, it's a lot more. It's a lot, excuse me, less entailed oh, okay. um, buying the car. Um, there you're gonna basically, you, you need to be working. Okay, so you gotta, okay, so you gotta already have, a job. You gotta have a job. Can't go um, in there without a job. Um, no income, <laughs> you know, your debt ratio might be a little out of whack. Yeah, okay. All right, because, right. uh, you know, when, now we have a payment and uh, yeah, okay. you don't have any income to make that payment. So, um, kind of one of those, but you just need to really provide pay stubs and, you know, things of that nature, um, depending on what kind of car you're looking to buy. Um, if you're looking to buy an older, Automobile, you might need a little bit of money mm -hmm. down on something like I, that. I understand now money. today's banks, if a car is a certain age, they're not gonna give you a loan for it. Well, you is know, that? for us, I know on a personal level, um, okay. our only question, because we'll have that all the time, what's this year, will you do a loan on that year? Mm -hmm. Our question is, will the insurance company insure full coverage, that auto? Okay. If they say yes, we'll do it. Um, so we have different tiers on, you know, the better, the, the newer the auto, the better the rate, mm -hmm. the older the auto. 
you the, have to the rate bigger. goes up a little bit more. So what would be a typical, right now in today's society, in today's economy, the way we have it, typical rate for, uh, interest rate for a car? Say it's a 2017. I mean, if you're looking at a 2017 and say you have a, a 700 credit score. Okay. Um, you're looking at that's a rate good. right around 3%. 3%? Oh, so that's pretty really good. Really good. Yeah. All right. So, we, so small business loan, I know a lot of guys got ideas, ambitions, and goals about mm -hmm. starting their own company, you know, but you got to bring collateral. Yep. You got to put skin in the game. And we talked about a car, it's a whole different type. You just, you got to have a job. You got to have good, maybe, maybe not even the best credit, but a credit score of 700, which is really a, a good, good credit score, really. Um, and then uh, the home mortgage, you, you mentioned that earlier mm -hmm. about the American dream. Um, that seems like a big lift when a guy who's coming straight out of prison, is yeah. he gonna be able to get a loan to buy a house? I mean, it's gonna be tough. Um, that might be one where, you know, I probably suggest you might want to rent okay. um, a little while when, when you come, and then you can build up some cash too. Um, Cause there are some hundred percent programs out there. Um, sometimes the rates are a little bit higher. Mm -hmm. um, you have mortgage insurance on those that are on there for the life um, of the loan. So it's not like a normal conventional where after 80% it leaves. It's on there forever until you refinance. That's the only way to get rid of it. Wow. So some of those things are benefits to, to wait just a little so bit. So you would have your mortgage payment plus another payment on top of the mortgage payment for life because uh, you're not in a position to get a conventional loan? Correct. Right? Wow, okay. And that's something that everybody should look at before they sign that dotted line. Yeah, and a lot of people don't yeah. um, look at that. Get they desperate, just, just want it. They just want the house. You know? So. It's rare we get anybody ask what are the fees. It's usually what's the rate, mm. and you know, and, and you know now what they've done. They you know we have to send out the, the loan estimate and things like, and they've got to be pretty exact. Awesome. So, so those are kind of helping a little bit. Okay. So we talked about small business loan, a car loan, and a little bit about mortgage. So when we come back, we're going to hit more about the mortgage loan because I think, you know, being a dad, that's the American dream, owning your own home. Right. But there's a process and it takes time, especially when you come out and you got to reinvent yourself and start all over again, dads, right? And that's a big lift. That's mm -hmm. a big lift. And we don't want you to get all the way in debt from day one, you get out, right? Right. So stay tuned, and we're gonna talk a little bit more with Ryan Frederick about how to get a loan or maybe a type of different loan. So stay tuned, and we'll be right back. Playing catch, basketball, laughing, and enjoying each other's company. These are all normal things on the outside, but many times are missed in a visitation setting. Tyro Dads brings the same fun experience to the inside through family days. As a Tyro Dad, you have the opportunity to participate in this fantastic event. Family Day is designed to allow fathers and families to engage with each other through activities designed to stimulate communication, learning, and play. Family Days will not only be a highlight for you, but for your children as well. The Ridge Project has strategically developed Family Day as an opportunity to help you connect with your child throughout your separation and help both of you develop skills to continue building your relationship when you return home. Welcome back to Tyro TV, I'm Ron Tierina, and today we have with us a special guest, Mr. Ryan Frederick from the Sherwood State Bank, and we're talking about types of loans and how to get them, okay? And so during break, Ryan and I were talking about um, this thing that happens if you do more than seven years in a penitentiary, and it actually happened to me. Um, I left, when I left home, when I was incarcerated, I left with debt. But when I came home after doing 15 years, I went to go look at my credit rating. I figured it was in the doo-doo, in the dumps, right? It was at zero. It was like I had never had any bad credit. I, I had, it was basically a clean slate, right? And, and so with that information, what, what should I be thinking? Well, I mean, at that point, I mean, you really got to, because, I mean, you were saying in the break, too, you've got to, you know, reinvent yourself to others. And, uh, and, and it's true because I, I had an example of this where it was a gentleman who just got out of jail. He'd served a few years. And uh, you know, the first thing was he, was he was kind of ashamed to tell me that. Mm. You know, when I asked what his prior employer was. He, he didn't say ODRC, huh? He gave me the address. <laughs> and then he came out and he was like, well, I, I, I was there for eight okay. years. So, but it was one of those ones and, and you don't look down on them. 
because mm -hmm. um, he was coming in. The only thing I asked, we weren't able to do anything right then. He, he was working, had a job. And my advice to him was, I wanna see you on that job for one year. Okay. And then we'll sit down and we'll take a look at this. He called me on the one year anniversary of his job and said, I've been here a year. Wow. And I said, tell you what, come on in, bring your pay stubs, do this and that. He was able to get a co-signer, somebody who's willing to sign with him. Wow. And that, that first experience was, let's see how you do. Yep. And he made sure he made every payment. He was never late. So when he came in to refinance or, or buy something the next time, because he paid that loan off, yep. and he was pretty proud of that. He let me know when he yeah. came in that day to pay it off. And when he came in the next time, we were able to do it on his own. So it was a matter of demonstrating to the bank that I'm a good risk, mm, mm. where some weren't really even looking at him. Mm, I'm a good because risk. Because of that. I'm a good risk, because I can be taken at my word. Exactly. You know, and, and, and it's okay. Listen, 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 dads, you gotta start all over again. Right now, you're incarcerated, your word is doo-doo. When I was incarcerated, I got out, my word was doo-doo. Nobody gonna take me at my word. I, you know, I couldn't even buy toilet paper, right? I don't have money, no money. They're, and that's the that's reality when men come over prison. I think they forget, look, dad, you can't even buy toilet paper yet. You wanna go out and get a, 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 a car that's two years old and it's $20,000. How are you gonna pay that off when you can't buy toilet paper, right? right? And I think the, the reality of when you get to reinvent yourself, you get to reestablish yourself. People love an underdog. I think that's the greatest thing about our country. You know what, you were willing to give them a chance. Be there a year, I challenge you. Be there a year, come back and we'll talk some more. Yeah. And you challenged him and he said, you know what, I'm gonna take that challenge, I'm gonna reinvent myself, I'm gonna come back on my anniversary and I'm gonna show you who I am. I did it. Yep. That was the first step. You can take me at my word, I'm back, right? Yep. And now he's gotten to that point where he's the normal guy. He's the normal guy. So you no he's longer see him as, as a client who, no. with a former prison number. Now you see him as an equal. Exactly. Wow, and that's, that's what this is all about. Because I know in my own personal life, able to go to a bank, get any loan that I would like to today, right? I know I can do that, but I don't because I wanna make sure right. that I can meet my obligations. Right? I wanna be able to keep that great credit score. I wanna be able to keep that great reputation. No longer somebody who you can't take at his word, but somebody, you know what, when, when Ron, when I say something, you could take that to the bank, right? For lack of a, no, you know, for lack of a better phrase, but that's what it means, yep. you know? And plus, when you said I was, that person became a, a low risk, that means he's a great return of investment. Exactly. Right? Exactly. Because you're in it to make money too, right? Right, I mean, our whole thing when we review any request is what's the risk factor with this loan? Because if the risk factor is out the roof, mm. I mean, I don't wanna be getting the loan back and you know, it's nice to talk to you every once in a while, but I don't wanna have you on my call list every yeah. single month. Okay, here I go again. Trying to collect that debt. Exactly, Ooh. so I mean, it's <laughs> nice when people just, they, they, they pay their debts, it's an easy, and low risk is yeah. where you wanna be. Where you wanna be. So. I tell you, you know, with today's, uh, things that are being built, you know, computers and these new automobiles and stuff like that, you know, you gotta be, you, you, you gotta have some of this stuff in order to really keep up with what's happening. You know, you, you gotta have an email. So in order to have an email, you gotta have a computer and computers are not cheap, but, but they're accessible, right. right? They're obtainable, but you gotta have a good job, right? To go out and get this stuff. Cause then you, it might, you might have a computer, but then you gotta have what? Internet. <laughs> you gotta have internet at home. And then you, that means you, the, the people who provide internet are gonna take you at your word, you're gonna pay the internet bill. There's a lot of things that go into just living, right, in today's right. society. And so I, we really wanna, uh, uh, before we close though, we're gonna come back and we're gonna do one more segment. And, and if you could give three things, Ryan, to, to help these men while they're there preparing themselves when they come out to meet a man like you, right? If you can give us three things that they, that they can embrace and begin doing right now that when they meet you, that all you gotta do is say, you know what, I love what you just sold me, I love what you just told me, let's move forward, let's sign it, let's get this done. Okay. All right, so stay tuned, and we'll be right back with those three nuggets that will help you reach your dreams and achieve your goals. Dear son, it's been hard these last few years watching you grow up without me in the picture. Never taking the time to find out how you were or what was going on in your life. You're just a boy, I thought. You don't need me. I didn't need my dad. He was never around. I told myself. But I was wrong, son. I'm supposed to be a grown man. 
I was selfish. I was stupid. I was thinking of me, not you. If I could go back, son, and change things, I would. It's taken me all this time being selfish to finally grow up and realize I need to be a responsible man. That's what I finally learned, not from prison, but the Tyro program. It's all about becoming a better, stronger man. Wish I would have gotten it sooner. Everything looks different to me now. I'm a changed person. I know I need to be there for you now. It's not about me anymore. It's not about being cool. It's not about who I run with. It's about mom. It's about you. It's about being a better man, learning something new in my life. It's about being a Tyro, a man worth following. I'm your dad. You're my son. And I love you. I am a Tyro. I'm a Tyro. Dad. If you think you have what it takes to be a Tyro or just want to know more, contact your local Ridge Project facilitator or your caseworker. Um, welcome back to Tyro TV. I'm Ron Tierina. And I'm Ryan Frederick. And today we're talking about how to get a loan and what, it, what a loan is, man. Because you know what? If, you're, if, you don't, if your word is doo-doo, man, ain't nobody want to talk to you. Ain't nobody want to associate with you. I'm telling you, when you're a man of your word, though, you can go anywhere with your chest out, right? Put the pectoral action going, chin up, right? And you can walk into any bank and you know you are a great asset. You are a great, uh, what's that word you use? You're a great, uh, great risk. You're a great risk. You're a great return of investment. Mm -hmm. And that's what we want to produce. Tyros, men of honor, men of good character, who no matter what they, they want to go to in any bank at any time, they're a great risk. Right? That's so right. if we had some things to give them, right? If you got some things to empower them that they can do right now, before they leave that institution, what, what would you say? I mean, maybe it's three, maybe it's four. What would it be? Well, I mean, one of the, the big things that you got, and, and I don't know how the situation works um, when you're behind bars, but um, if you have the capability of saving um, at all and start that process, and I don't care how much it is. Right. Um, you know, it can be a little bit, but um, if you develop that as far as a routine, you're going to continue to do it. Mm. Um, and it's not going to be a big deal. So a lot of these things, when somebody comes in to see me, if they have cash, it makes the process easier. Okay. Um, so that would be one big thing. Savings. Uh, right. So if a guy's making $18 a month, and that's a, that's a you know, in Penn, Penn, that's a, not very much money, right? Right. Just like it's not very much money out here, right? It's, but if he could save, let's say, because we were talking about just practice it. Right. Yeah, just got practice. Discipline. Put $1 aside every month. Yeah, you have, it might only be $12 a year, but you know what? You, you did it. Right. You put. You told yourself, I'm gonna not gonna touch one dollar or two dollars. Becomes a habit. It becomes. It becomes a good habit. Right. All right. Savings. What else we got? Um, I think the the other thing is, and and I know when in my conversations with yourself and uh, you developed goals when you were behind bars mm -hmm. on what you wanted to do. Um, you don't. You know, say that you want to own your own business someday. It's probably too late to start thinking about it once you get out. Mm, that's true. So start thinking about. You know, how would I, how would I market this thing? Mm. How, would I, how would I do it? Um, develop that game plan. And then once you do get out, you have a game plan where, say I want to open up a, uh, I don't know, a car fix it okay. shop or whatever. I might go talk to a few people that have done that because after talking to them, they might go, no, you don't want right. to do this. Right. So, so some of those things, then you can start the, the process. You know what, you, you, you hit on something really powerful. Go talk to them. In the penitentiary, guys, now you come on now, there are a lot of people who've done, who've done a lot of things, who've owned their own businesses, who've maybe owned more than one business, maybe tried a business and failed and started another one and what have you. And there's so much knowledge and information right, right there in the penitentiary of men who have done some stuff and have learned what works and what don't work. And you can tap into right. that, that library of knowledge, right? So if you do want to do, a, say, a detail shop, there's got to be a guy in there somewhere who has done a detail shop, and he can already tell you, well, these are the first 10 things you need to do or you need to acquire right. to open up your own car. Or maybe what you need to avoid. Or, you yeah. know, it's kind of one of those that you don't have to recreate the wheel mm. out here, but you learn from other people's mistakes. Yes. That, you know, I tried this and it just doesn't work. Stay away from that. And this is maybe something I didn't do, 
that I should have done. Okay. So that's where you develop kind of those things. And then once you do get out, it might not be right away that you get to do it, but you're going to be developing that plan. And we talked about the presentation when you yeah. come in. It depends on, you know, what, what's, your, what's your selling point? If you come in, say that you came in, I, I know the excitement level you bring with things. Mm -hmm. You could sell me anything. Yeah, know, I, could about, I could sell you jumping, Mexican jumping beans, right? You could. I'd buy them right now. <laughs> Give me two sets of those. I tell you. So, uh, you know, kind of one of those. But so then you start developing that. And, you know, the more that you think about it and the more you're yep. working on it, the easier it is when you come in to present yep. it. And you're not manipulating so, people. It's no. your passion no. that's bringing because the proof is in the what? The proof is in the pudding. Yep. And when you've laid it all out, right, you've laid your goals out. And listen, you're in the perfect place where you can begin dreaming and writing it out and getting information around you where you can take that eraser. You know what? This ain't going to work. And just continually, you're always in that continuous improvement plan of your business plan. What is your center plea, your centerpiece look like? Is it appealing? Is it attractive? Is it drawing people to you? Or is it repulsive, right? And is it is it ugly? Are they like want to run from your idea, your dreams, right? Because it's crazy, right? Right. So what else, what else we got? Um, you know, one of the last things I would say, you mentioned a word right there was dream. But I think, you know, we could add a word to that, dream smart. Because mm. um, I, I like think, that. Uh, I like that. you know, it's kind of like when kids are getting out of college today. Um, it's similar when they're getting out, you know, behind bars. A lot of these, the, the focus is when I get out, I've got to have this, mm. this, and this. This is what I want. You know, because I always looked and I was, okay, my, my parents lived in this, this house, this, but I never thought about the process, how long it took him to get to that right, point, yeah. where I think that's what I'm going to get right away. Mm. So I think, uh, you know, it, it's, it's great to dream because if you quit dreaming, you're, you're, you're in bad shape. Yeah. You know, it's going to be a long, long road for you. But you can keep dreaming but you got to dream smart yep. and got to be dream realistic as well yep. and know what it takes to get to that dream. Well, that, that, is, steps. that is a powerful dream smart. You know, we got smart TV, smart phones, smart watches. You know what? We got, do we have smart dreamers? Right. Right. Or are you always living a daydream? Right. You know, whereas, you know, you, if you're still fantasizing about becoming that, you know, a lot of guys in, in prison will, will play basketball, right? And they're really great basketball players, but they're getting good in the penitentiary. NBA probably isn't going to take you. Right. because you have a colorful background or whatever. I'm 5'4", my days of basketball are over, right? Right. I never had a start, right? Yeah. So I want to dream smart, in other words, with realistic goals in mind, right? Right. So, so Ryan, this has been amazing. This has been wonderful. Um, man, if there's, any, if, you know, if there's anything that, that, uh, that we have, I'm going to ask the guys, send me some, some of your questions. You got some ideas, some things. And you know what? Ryan is, is, is a dear friend of mine, and, and I'm able to talk to him almost you know, every day, every day if, we, if we wanted to. Um, but he has a life. I have a life. And, but, but I can always, he has an open door policy for me. And if you got any questions, you know, see the caseworker, see your manager, and you can, you can write me a letter at, at the Ridge Project. You know, we'll get you the address. It'll be on the bottom of the screen. And, and shoot me any questions you might have, and we'll get them to Ryan. Mm -hmm. And uh, in fact, if we can, um, we'll get Ryan's information to you guys okay. so he can start writing. You can write him a letter, right? And that'll be good. He, Ryan loves to write letters to men in prison. <laughs> All the time. <laughs> All the time. So, so anyway, so it's been great. It's been great. Don't worry. You're pretty, but we'll get you out. We'll get you out. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> All right. Hey, listen, stay tuned. Um, when we come back, we're just going to close out with Ryan Frederick. So uh, thank you for joining us, and we'll be right back. Tyro Dads will help you see who you really are on the inside by coming to terms with your past, present, and future. You will begin to move forward by using your time on the inside to transform yourself. We know you're not the only one serving time. Your family is too. Overcoming the issues that existed prior to and during incarceration are often more than what many families can survive. Tyro Dads has a unique method of reaching and healing families based on Ron and Catherine Tiarina's own personal experiences. Tyro Dads works exclusively with incarcerated fathers who have minor children. The program lasts for 10 weeks and focuses on intensive character development. You'll be taught to take responsibility for your actions. 
to own it. You'll be prepared to overcome the obstacles of incarceration and transition back into your home and community, both successfully and permanently. Upon successful completion of this program, you will earn the title of Tyro, which means a warrior, someone learning something new. You will be one of the honored, a man worth following. If you think you have what it takes to be a Tyro or you want to know more, contact your local project facilitator or your institution staff. Well, welcome to Tyro TV. I'm Ryan Tiarina and... Ryan Frederick. Ryan Frederick from the Sherwood State Bank in Defiance, Ohio. And actually, you got more than one bank, right? We, we have four branches. Four branches, woo -hoo. And you know what? We, be, we bank with Sherwood Bank. We love you guys. So, but listen, before we close out, I just want to say thank you so much. Um, if there's one word to empower the men, what would that be? Um, you know, I we know mentioned it. it right at the end was dream. Dream. Um, you know, because I think you, you don't want to give up on, on you know, when, when you get out, it's going to be tough. I mean, we all know that, but I mean, you got to keep dreaming. Gotta keep dreaming. You know, we've had a lot of fun on this show and it's been really uh, unscripted. It's been really just real, just having a conversation. But the reality is, you know what? You get out of the penitentiary, don't run to the bank. Let's get a job. Mm -hmm. Let's figure this out. You know, this is a process. Cause you said it earlier, you know, I wanted what my dad and mom had, but I never understood the hard work that they put into getting right. where they're at. You know, and I do, I get it now. I totally get it today. You know, hard work equals profit. And, and we want to encourage you guys that, you know, there's life after penitentiary. And the key word is to dream, but dream smart. So until next time, always remember that we, we are, are rooting, rooting for, for you. you.